Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Matthew Matthew Joes and today I'm bringing you the hemodynamics and what the blood contains and what the different uh, elements that's contained within the blood. So this uh, slide is uh, produced initially by Jennifer L. Dorothy from the Department of Health in the University of uh, International of Florida International University. So what is the function of the blood? So I'm pretty sure you're well aware of the functions of the blood. Uh, so the function of the blood initially starts off with distribution and transport. So it basically delivers in uh, oxygen from lungs and nutrients from the gastrointestinal tract to the entire body, well, basically to the respiring cells. And it also transfers metabolic waste from cells and to elimination sites such as lungs and your kidneys. And it also transports hormones from endocrine glands to target organs. It's also involved in the maintenance of body temperature. So absorbing and distributing metabolic heat as well as maintaining homeostasis. Uh, it's also involved in the regulation and maintenance of a normal pH. So the blood obviously has a natural buffer, which you would know as is carbonic acid, HCO3. It's also involved in maintenance of water content of cells within blood osmotic pressure. And uh, finally, it's involved in protection. So the blood carries uh, components of the immune system. So, and this prevents infection, but it also causes inflammation and so on. So we'll look into all of this in a bit more detail. So as a student, uh, you should know it's involved in distribution and transport, maintenance of body temperature, controlling normal pH, as well as protection of the human body from uh, infections. So the blood is a fluid connective tissue composed of two things. It's composed of an organic portion, uh, as well as an inorganic portion. The organic portion includes erythrocytes uh, or the less just uh, um, as well as leukocytes which are white blood cells, platelets involved in uh, platelet formation and plasma proteins. The inorganic side of it is formed via plasma. So the liquid part of the blood composed of water and mixture of organic uh, substances is 92% water, 7% plasma proteins, less than 1% other materials, and even less than that, uh, electrolytes, buffers, nutrient gases, hormones, waste, etc. The function of the plasma transport nutrients and gases, they regulate fluid and electrolyte balance, uh, balance and helps maintain a stable pH. So the plasma is only 55, uh, 45% of the blood anyway. And of that 45%, 92% of it is water, 7% is plasma proteins, and so on. So, from the previous slide, it contains two parts. It has an organic portion, which is cells or formed elements, such as erythrocytes, red blood cells, leukocytes, meaning white blood cells, platelets, and plasma protein. And the inorganic contains a plasma. And the plasma contains 92% water, 7% plasma proteins, like albumin and so uh, other things, and then other uh, very small quantities of electrolytes and buffers and so on. And the function of plasma include transporting nutrients and gases, regulate fluid and electrolyte balance, and it helps to maintain pH. So the plasma is very similar to interstitial fluid, except it has way more proteins in it. And the proteins remain in the plasma and cannot easily move into the interstitial phase because of the structure of the blood vessel. And a serum is uh, usually a plasma without without the plasma protein, so with the plasma proteins taken out, that's what a serum is. Now, plasma proteins has functions. They maintain uh, osmotic pressure, maintain blood pH, and also clotting as well as immunity. Now, the plasma protein comes in three groups. So you have the... Um, Albumins, like I said, they comprise 55% of plasma proteins and their function is to maintain osmotic pressure. Globulins um, comprise 36% uh, of plasma proteins and they transport ions, fats and fat soluble vitamins in the blood. They have gamma globulins function as antibodies in providing uh, immunity, so IgG, IgA, IgE, which we will look into when we do the immunity um, physiology behind the immune system. And you also have fibrinogen, which comprises of 7% of the plasma protein, so altogether 55 plus 36 plus 7 should give you 100. And um, 
Fibrinogen is used in the um, platelet clotting function is clotting as I've mentioned. Right. The formed elements, so this is part of the organic now, i.e. living, they contain erythrocytes, RBC red blood cell, leukocyte, white blood cells, and platelets. These are synthesized in the bone marrow and in the children the marrow of all bones produce blood cells. In adults only the uh, marrow of the flat bones of the skull, sternum, pelvis and the long bones of the upper limbs produce blood cells. Okay, so hematopoiesis is a process where by which red blood cells are formed. Now red blood cell is one of the most specialized cells inside of the body and it carries what's known as a hemoglobin. Hemoglobin comprises of one third of red blood cells total weight. In adults your normal red blood cell count per millimeter should be about five to six million millimeter cube so cubic millimeter all right so when you do your blood test so your full blood count test and stuff uh, usual clinicians will look at range if they're working with the same quantity or the same uh, scale then if it's anything below five to six million you would expect you know uh, some problem if it's r like really high when it's shooting above like 20 million then you know you have suspect you blood leukemia or something which is a cancer of the blood cells 30 trillion blood cells circulate in the blood and women and children have about 4.5 to 5 million whereas men have usually 5 to 6 million. They're very tiny in size and this is obviously due to being able to diffuse easily uh, allowing very narrow uh, diffusion distance to be very narrow so diffusion can take place very rapidly. They have a biconcave shape so therefore it increases a large surface area which aids in gas diffusion they have no nucleus and glucose is the only fuel source for red blood cells so there's a section or a, you know cross-sectional view and uh, you can see the diameter of a normal red blood cell is 7.5 micrometers and the thickness is around 2 micrometers Hemoglobin is the component which carries oxygen within the red blood cell and it binds reversibly to oxygen whereas it binds irreversibly to um, it binds uh, reversibly to oxygen whereas irreversibly to carbon monoxide which is detrimental because then it you know you you just basically waste the red blood cell and it becomes inactive or useless and dead so there, this state of the oxygen binding to hemoglobin is in an equilibrium state. When it is bind, bound to the hemoglobin, it's known as oxyhemoglobin. And uh, deoxyhemoglobin is when the oxygen is not bound. And that results in having a dark red color and gives veins a bluish tint. It's when the oxygen is bound to the hemoglobin that the bright red the blood looks really bright red color. The hemoglobin, as you all know, is composed of four globin molecules and uh, it has a heme group containing a ferrous ion Fe2 plus in the middle. And each ion, um, each of the four globin, uh, globin chains is bound to a heme group. And each heme can bind reversibly with one oxygen molecule, thus each hemoglobin can carry up to four molecules of oxygen. Because uh, since it has uh, one hemoglobin, it's composed of four globin molecules, and each globin can carry one iron atom. Four of them will carry four iron atoms, so therefore each one could bind to one oxygen, making a total of four molecules of oxygen. And here's a diagram of what the hemoglobin molecule would look like. So you have on the screen now, you have the hemoglobin molecule and you have the heme group which is shown on the right in the yellow. So you have one uh, iron Fe2 plus in the middle which has an affinity to bind to oxygen. So like this, so imagine this yellow is the heme group. You have four of them in one hemoglobin molecule. So you can see one here, two there, one just, you know, you can just see the yellow bit there. That's the third one and this is the fourth one. So all together this can bind four oxygens and this is one whole hemoglobin uh, molecule and one red blood cell contains one of these. Now, 
leukocytes represents only 1% of the total blood volume and leukocytes are referred to as white blood cell the only thing is they're synthesized in the bone marrow WBCs are unlike red blood cells the following ways they contain a nucleus and organelles they do not, contain, they do not have a hemoglobin compared to red blood cells and they are, they can be able they are able to do diapedesis which is uh, they are able to crawl along the blood vessel and then you know leak out from the blood vessel into the site of injury or something and they can also carry out chemotaxis to travel leading to the site of tissue damage same thing as diapedesis leukocytes are classified into two groups granulocytes and uh, agranulocytes okay Now, platelets, um, they're the really important part, okay, because uh, you can read through the information on the screen now. I'm not really going to go through um, in a great detail of what, how platelets are formed. Platelets are also known as thrombocytes. So when you injure yourself or you cut yourself with a knife while you're trying to cook something or something, uh, you always find that you have that rapid rush of blood. And you always try to either run your hands underneath cold water or you try to suck your finger. Uh, uh, lick the area where you just had a bleed or you, you know eventually getting down to putting a plaster or a bandage around it so it's inevitably how does the body has its own way to control the bleeding and this is by uh, platelet aggregation so the function of platelets is to stop bleeding through the process of hemo hemostasis so they stop um, bleeding in a small blood vessel or in a superficial cut by physically plugging breaks in blood vessels. So it acts as a plug. So you have when you have water running through a sink or something and you want to store the water instead of letting it drain straight through the sink, um, you always put a plug. Right? So similar way what the platelet does is it forms a it, have a, it forms a plug which then goes into the site of injury and just you know blocks the whole way blocks the hole so therefore blood is not leaked out anymore. So in the platelet aggregation or blood clotting is involves three main phases. The first one is a vascular spasm, next is a platelet plug formation, and then the last one is the formation of the blood clot, which we'll go through in a different video. Right. So far you get the idea of what is uh, contained within the blood. I know it's not the best video or the best slide that I can potentially bring about to you guys, but as an overview, you should know that you know your blood is contains a uh, pretty much a connective fluid tissue, right? It contains uh, it for is formed of two parts. It has a living part, i.e., cells like red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and so on, and it also has a plasma. The plasma is contained of 92% water, 7% of your plasma proteins, 1% of other things like electrolytes and buffers and things which are involved in transporting and as well as maintaining blood pH and uh, temperature as well. The other aspect of the living cell, which like the red blood cells involved in carrying oxygen, um, gives you that reddish colour. Uh, the red blood cells they only account for 1%, but they are involved in protection and immunity or to fight off infection. Platelets are involved in uh, to block or stop bleeding. So hopefully that's just an overview and you've enjoyed the video. You can always find this at our website at www.royalcrisscollege.co.uk which will be uh, put in the link or the description. If you enjoyed the video, uh, please do like the video and uh, if you'd like to ever create videos like this where you can educate the world of your knowledge you can always go to our website like I said before and follow the screen instructions on the screen and submit your work and on behalf of RCC my name is Matthew Matthew Joes hopefully you've enjoyed the video please do rate like subscribe everything that you can also do to propel this channel and thank you once again